This has been a successful year for the Miami Dolphins with 10 wins, 5 better than in 2019. The five-win improvement this season is tied for the best in the National Football League this season with the Cleveland Browns. It was the 23rd season in franchise history with double-digit wins and the first since 2016. Miami went 9-3 in their final 12 games and 10-4 in the final 14. They recorded a takeaway in all 16 games and extended the overall streak to 22 games dating back to last season, the longest active mark in the NFL. The last time Miami had a takeaway streak this long was from December 5, 1982 to October 6, 1985, when they had a takeaway for a franchise record 42 straight games. The last streak of this length in the NFL was the 2011-2013 New England Patriots who secured a takeaway in 36 straight games. The Dolphins led the NFL with 29 takeaways host for the franchise since 2008-30. The Dolphins end the season with a plus 66 point differential, the largest by Miami since the 2002 season, plus 77. Their 31 to 16 average time of possession per game was the best Dolphins mark since 2009 and their league best third down defense, 31.2%, was Miami's best since 1999. Miami Dolphins defense team the defense's 41 sacks were the most by a Dolphins team since 2013 and the 21.1 points allowed per game was the team's fewest since the 2013 season. Linebackers Jerome Baker, 7, Kyle Van Noy, 6, and Andrew Van Ginkle, 5.5, all tallied at least 5 sacks. It's the first time Miami had 3 players with at least 5 sacks in the same season. The Dolphins gained 345 first downs this season, tied for the team's second most since at least 1991. The Dolphins had 300 The Dolphins had 361 first downs in 2014 and also had 345 in 1995. Dolphins tight ends caught 91 passes for 1061 receiving yards, both franchise best marks collectively among the tight end room. The 11 combined touchdown receptions between Mike Jasicki, Durham Smythe and Adam Shaheen tied the Dolphins' tight end record. Cornerback Xavier Howard tied the Dolphins' franchise record with 10 interceptions 1967, Dick Westmoreland. Howard led the NFL in interceptions and passes defense, 20. His first career interception came in 2017, and he's picked off 22 passes since that time, the most in the NFL, Tennessee's Kevin Biard is second with 18. Howard finished the season with a passer rating against of 53.0, best in the NFL among cornerbacks with at least 40 pass targets. His completion percentage allowed of just 52.2 was fifth among corner cornerback Byron Jones set a career high with two interceptions. He allowed just 40 receptions in 14 games, 2.86 receptions per game. Eric Rowe's first full season at safety was a success. He allowed just 6.86 yards per target, intercepted two passes, broke up nine more and added 25 run stops. Opposing quarterbacks posted a passer rating of just 76.9 when targeting Rowe, fourth among safeties with at least 40 pass targets. was targeted only 10 times as the primary coverage man, according to Pro Football Focus. The 10 pass attempts produced a passer rating of just 27.5. McCain and Rowe made a combined 137 tackles with only 13 missed attempts, good for a tackle success rate of 90.6%, pro football reference. Defensive end Emmanuel Ogba finished in the top 20 in sacks 9.0, quarterback hits 21, and forced fumbles 3. His 66 quarterback pressures were third most among edge defenders trailing only Shaquille Barrett TB, and TJ Watt Pitt. He recorded a sack in six consecutive games this season, the second-longest streak in franchise history. Defensive end Shaq Lawson finished second on the team with 39 quarterback pressures. His 18 QB hits were 26th in the NFL and he added 15 run stops and four tackles for loss. Defensive tackle Zach Sealer led the team with 11 tackles for the team with 11 tackles for loss and finished 25th in the NFL in that category. The only defensive tackles higher on that list were Aaron Donald Lar, and Leonard Williams NYG. His 25 quarterback pressures were fourth on the team and his 32 run stops were second. The 32 run stops were eighth among NFL defensive tackles. 
Defensive tackle Raekwon Davis finished the season with 40 tackles, the second most by a rookie defensive lineman this season, Chase Young, 44. Defensive tackle Christian Wilkins finished third on the team with 30 run stops and 11th in the NFL among defensive tackles. His 42% run stop win rate ESPN was sixth best at his position. Linebacker Jerome Baker led the Dolphins with 39 run stops. He also finished with 112 tackles, 27th in the NFL and best on the team. Among off-ball linebackers, Baker finished second in the league with seven sacks. Linebacker Kyle Van Noy set a career high with six sacks. His 31 quarterback pressures tied for second among players classified as linebackers, courtesy of PFF. Linebacker Andrew Van Ginkle saw marked improvements across the board from his rookie season. He set career highs in tackles 48, sacks 5.5, QB hits 21, forced fumbles 3, and scored a 78-yard fumble return touchdown. Miami Dolphins offense team. Quarterback Tua Tungavailoa finished the season with five interceptions on 290 passing attempts, good for an interception rate of 1.72, which is the second lowest in a season in team history, 1.47, Chad Pennington, 2008. He finished the year with the seventh fastest release time, 2.55, per next gen stats. When blitzed, Tungavailoa completed 64.7% of his passes and threw seven touchdowns, just one interception, and posted a passer rating of 101.6 against an extra rusher. Running back Miles Gaskin averaged 97.2 yards from scrimmage per game played, which ranked ninth in the NFL, minimum 10 games played. His 2.54 yards after initial contact average led all Dolphins running backs with at least 20 attempts. Salvin Ahmed became the first undrafted rookie in Dolphins history to rush for 100 yards when he had 100 versus New England on December 20, 2020. He was second on the team with nine forced missed tackles, Gaskin first with 30. Wide receiver Devontae Parker recorded three 100-yard games, the second-highest total of his career. He led the team in receiving for the second straight year with 793 yards. His 61.2 catch percentage was the second best mark of his career, 64.6%, 2016. Tight end Mike Jasicki led the team with six receiving touchdowns and finished second on the team with 703 receiving yards. The 703 receiving yards were second among tight ends in team history and fourth among NFL tight ends this season. His 8.3 yards per target trumped his previous high, 6.4 in 2019. Center Ted Karras never missed a snap and allowed only 11 quarterback pressures on 667 pass-blocking snaps. Rookie guard Solomon Kindley had the second per snap allowed rate on the team. He allowed just 17 pressures on 448 pass-blocking snaps. Rookie left tackle Austin Jackson allowed only one sack from Week 12 on. On the other side, rookie right tackle Robert Hunt earned five of his top PFF game grades over the final six weeks of the season. Veteran Jesse Davis played 1,055 snaps at three different positions and allowed only one sack all season. Fellow veteran Eric Flowers surrendered just 20 quarterback pressures on 539 pass-blocking snaps. Special Teams Jason Sanders tied the franchise record for points scored 144, matching the 1999 season of fellow kicker Alindo Mayer. He finished the season 36 of 39 on field goals, giving him a franchise best 92.3 field goal percentage. His 36 made field goals were second most in the NFL this season and also second most in team history beh behind Mayer's 39 in 1999. Jakeem Grant finished second in the NFL with 330 punt return yards. His 88-yard return for a touchdown against the Rams in Week 8 set a franchise record both for longest punt return and most career punt return touchdowns, 3. Matt Hawk's 26 punts downed inside the 20-yard line tied for sixth most in the NFL. Safety Clayton Figidellum led the Dolphins with nine tackles on special teams. He also converted both of his two rushing attempts for first downs on fake punts. His 22-yard run in Week 16 in Las Vegas was the longest run by a non-skill player since 2003 when Matt Turk ran for 23 yards. Last things as usual, I spend 5 hours to give my opinion in the video, but you can do it in just 5 seconds. Let me know your thoughts by commenting below. 
I always appreciate your opinion, even when you say I'm bad. Talk it 10 time times and in 100 different videos. We all deserve our own voice.